Okay, in this video we're going to be replacing the clock mechanism. So, on many of the clocks you buy nowadays, pretty much everywhere, unless you buy a mechanical clock or go to a high dollar shop, they're going to have these battery operated movements. So, you need to check your batteries uh, before you spend the time and money replacing them or fixing them so the first thing is you know if you have a new battery you don't want to like mix it up and go oh which which one's the new one put in the old one and it doesn't work and you think the mechanism is broken <laughs> it can happen believe me alright now of course I know most of you don't have a multimeter maybe you do uh, some battery checkers have a little meter on there just kind of tell you where things are going but your battery should be 1.6 this one is 1.0 bad this one is 1.2 bad This one is 1.13, bad. And the new one I'm going to put in there is 1.6. And this is a 1.5 volt battery. <laughs> it should read 1.6. I'd say anything below 1.4, uh, your clock might start acting up. However, I've put uh, some good batteries in here and it keeps stopping so it's the mechanism I took it apart I didn't see any strip gears difficult to say well might have a cold solder on the board difficult to say now the other thing you want to watch out for is you want to make sure you can take your clock apart because you need to remove the mechanism and the hands are going to be on this side under the glass so you need to be able to remove the glass some clocks for some clocks it is extremely difficult to remove the glass because the glass is the first thing on and everything is piled up on top of it so you literally have to take the entire clock apart to get to the glass and some glasses some <laughs> clocks glasses have a band going around and you've got to take off the band and they can be really frustrating and complicated so let's look at these motors it turns out to be also ridiculously complicated. For the vast majority the size is the same. This square box here is going to be the same without getting into uh, metrics. You know it's, uh, what do I have here? A little over two inches, two and a sixteenth. Two and a sixteenth pretty much square. So that's, but that's really not the issue. You just want to make sure it's going to fit where you want to put it. The issue is here. You need to know all of these dimensions. You need to know how much thread is coming out. That is very, very important. And you might have to know that in millimeters. Then you have to know what this large white section is here. That holds one hand. And then you need to know what size the small section is. That holds the other hand. So you need the overall length, you need to know how far the thread length is, and you need to make sure that the hands are going to fit on there. And then you also, if you want a second hand, you need to make sure that there's a place for the second hand to go. Then also is the hand size. What I found is many of these are so close that it's ridiculous. Now, you line up the 
holes. This one's pretty good, but what you'll find is in a lot of these kits you can purchase, if you align the holes, these stupid things are like really, really close. Yeah, that's ridiculous. You need a long hand and a short hand. So, let's get on to the repair. So, for this particular size, where the threaded end and the hand holding ends were the size that I needed, <laughs> uh, it was just easier to get a two pack. And then I have an extra one because I do have other clocks that are the same size and if they ever go I'll have a backup. It came with some nice things, you know, here's a hook. That's pretty cool, you just hold it up to the wall and drive those four pins in and then you have a hook. That's really neat. Uh, came with new hands and stuff and you can see, if you look at these hands closely, uh, I don't like them because they're real close to the same size like I just talked about. Let me set this one up. Uh, this one's not too bad, but this one is bad. I mean, you can pretty much see that it's just, I don't know, a quarter inch. Forget that second hand. But it's pretty close together. That might be for a real small clock is why they're close together. And then uh, these guys are also close together. You, know, you can see where the center line of the hole is, you know, it's maybe about a quarter inch difference. So anyway, just just be real careful with the hands. I'll probably never use those. I'll use the ones that came with the clock originally. Alright, so here we go. Now this did come with hardware, so here's the nuts and the washer. So I won't need my nut and washer over there, but I will need the screws to hold down the uh, uh, cover to keep the glass in place. So let me do that. Just in case they're different thread sizes. I doubt it, but it, it, it could be. Alright, well this comes with a hook that I do not need. So this is the wall hook, like I said earlier. It's pretty cool. So I really don't need that. So the instructions are to insert this into the clock. So it comes out the shaft there. Then you insert the protective pad. Then you they call it a shim. I call it a washer. Then they say insert the washer. And then the hex nut. So let's go ahead and do that. Alright, well I've actually never come across one of these when I've replaced these clock movements. Uh, so I'm going to deviate from the directions a little bit and stick it on the back side. Stick it through. And I'm going to put on my washer just like it was originally. And then my lug nut that they're calling a screw. <laughs> and we're going to snug it down. However, do not over tighten. If you over tighten that thing, you'll really mess up the movement. It's kind of weird, but it will. So we'll just take, I'll just take my fingers and we'll just get it gooten tight. And you can see it sticking out there. Now we will install the hands. Now on the hands, you see a large hole and a small hole. Well, the large one goes on first and then the small one will go on top. So let's do that. I like to set the clock at 12 noon. Another thing you want to make sure is that the hands don't touch each other. Uh, sometimes they get bent, they're very thin and fragile, so you want to make sure that the top one doesn't interfere with the bottom one. Now this clock had a button for the second hand. Uh, this A second hand came with the box but I'm not going to add it to this clock. I'm going to just put the button back on top. Alright now that was the easy part. <laughs> the fun part is getting the glass back on. This clock is not too bad really should have uh, showed the repair on some of the clocks where the glass is an absolute pain to get off but you can see these little holes right here they need to line up 
need to make sure you don't touch the inside of the glass and if you clean it you make sure there's no fingerprints on there on the inside now you can't see it but you need it you need it to line up so that those tiny little holes line up with the receiving end on that ring I just installed. So that's fun to figure that out. Again, this clock is not as bad as I've seen them. Some of them are absolutely horrific. So here you have some like guides and if you look on the back side you'll see that the uh, screw hole will go into that guide right there and you need to make sure it's all lined up correctly and then you can snap it down in place so it gets to the point where you know it's like a blind fit and just snap it all the way around now we'll look on the back side while holding it on the front side set it down and hopefully when we look into the black hole <laughs> we'll actually see the uh, protrusion for the insert for the screw to go into. So hopefully you can see that the top plate is aligned with the hole. And again, this is one of the easier clocks I've done. Uh, some of the older ones are absolutely horrific. Some of your cheaper ones are even worse. So, hopefully you have a magnetic screwdriver and you can get that in place and get it started. Snug it down and do that a whole bunch more times. All, right, all the screws just need to be finger tight. No need to go crazy on there. Alright, next we put our 1.6 volt battery in there with the 1.5 nominal reading see I have it a little bit loose that's normal uh, you'll notice that on your clocks when uh, you change the battery you'll see these are loose and there's a reason for that is because you can damage the mechanism the one I replaced said tick tock tick tock but this one just sounds like a humming oh I can see movement too okay well it's moving so something's working. So I can see the minute hand has moved already. So we can set it to the correct time. And it is 2.20. So there you have it. Uh, changing the clock movement. It's really pretty easy, straightforward. The big thing is getting to it. So you don't destroy the original hands if you want to reuse them. Uh, when you remove them, just be very, very careful. I think I used a body panel tool, like for an automotive body panel tool. To get underneath them to lift them off so I didn't bend them. These are extremely fragile as far as bending, not breaking. So I just got my tool underneath there and lifted them off. So that was that's really the most difficult thing. Uh, the other thing is just figuring out how to get on the inside of the glass here <laughs> and then not get any fingerprints on the inside of the glass because you can always wipe the outside so fun little adventure uh, it's not difficult it does take time and you really really need to be careful with your measurements when you measure it, I know I have a ruler here, but you know, I measured mine with dial calipers and then a tape measure is going to be tough because a tape measure, you know, most of the markings that you need are hidden right here. So I would use a steel rule if you have one or a ruler and also millimeters. You're going to want metric. You're going to want to know your metric. how many millimeters it is overall length threaded length just that is the key 
to figuring it out because they come in all sizes. Just don't click on the first one you see on Amazon and say, wow, that's only a dollar. I'm going to get that one. <laughs> yeah, you'll be hating life when you get it in and it doesn't work because it hits the glass or your hands won't fit or, you know, it's just it's just craziness. <laughs> what can go wrong if you don't purchase the correct movement? So anyway, there's my little quick video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.